conditional fields on your WooCommerce at checkout store. Maybe you want to display specific fields and sections on your WooCommerce at checkout. So I'll show you how you can achieve that and so much more. Okay, so throughout this video, I've added a conditional section on our checkout page um, based on a particular product category. So for example, if we head over to our checkout page now, let's quickly open this up. Um, when we scroll down, everything looks pretty normal. However, when we add this book to our basket, then we'll see an extra field on our checkout page. So let's view our checkout again. Okay, and then when we scroll down, we can see this verification section, and then we've got these extra fields here. Yeah, so again, you can be much more creative than this, but for this example, I'm taking the approach of we're selling certain products which are restricted, and if a customer wants to purchase it, then we require some additional information from them, okay? So for example, we could have added a file upload field here, or whatever field type you like. You can go ahead and customize it and have it being displayed conditionally, okay? So if you want to create a similar setup on your WooCommerce store, the first step is to head over to aovup.com go ahead and download the all-in-one at checkout plugin by AOV up. I'll leave a link in the description below and with that being said let's head over to our dashboard. Okay so assuming you've downloaded the all-in-one at checkout plugin the next step is to go ahead and upload that plugin. So we'll go plugins add new go ahead and upload and install the plugin. Once you've done so you'll see this we suite menu here click activate to activate your license key. Having done so it'll automatically take you to this add-on section. And then from here, we can scroll down and just make sure we activate the all-in-one checkout plugin, the free and the pro version. To add a conditional field, you will need a pro version. Okay, so with everything activated, we'll head over to AIO checkout for all-in-one checkout. And then we'll just go ahead and create our first conditional field. Okay, so we'll click create a new checkout. Okay, and then by default, we'll see our billing section, shipping section, order summary. So to add new fields, all we have to do is click on this settings icon here. And then we can drag and drop different field types onto our canvas. We can drag and drop to rearrange it. And to further customize it, we'll just click on the individual settings icon here. Okay, and then we can set it to required. We can choose whether we want to display it on a thank you page, my account page, and so on. Okay, appearance, we can change the size of the field. And we can also add our conditional rules here. So where it says condition, we can go ahead and enable the conditional logic. And then for the display rule, we can choose whether we want to show or hide this particular field based on a condition that we'll set below. So for example, we can say, we only want to show this field when these conditions are met, okay? And then this is where we'll add our condition. So currently we can say whenever a particular product is in our basket or maybe not in our basket, or maybe based on a particular category tag in a future release as well, we can base it on a previous field action, okay? So we can say in the future, we'll be able to say if the customers entered in their email address, so which is this field here, then we wanna show this numbers field, okay? So we'll be able to build on top of our current fields in that manner, okay? So I'm going to X this off. Let's remove this. Let's remove this numbers field as well. And for this video, I'm going to add a conditional section. So again, as I said, we can do it on individual fields, but I'm just going to create a brand new section here. So for this scenario, let's imagine um, we're selling certain items which are restricted and for the customers to be able to purchase that item, they just need to upload um, a certain verification information. Okay. So we only want to display this verification step if a customer's purchase a restricted item. Okay. So I've created this new section. I'm just going to rename it. We could say verification or just name it whatever you want. Okay. So that step's done. And then for the condition, We'll enable our conditional logic and we'll only show this section whenever these conditions are met. So we'll just say whenever the product is in, let's say our book category, for example. Okay. Again, you'll make it obviously more realistic, usually quite fine to purchase a book. Okay. But this is our conditional logic. So it's quite simple. Um, I should mention as well with a relation, we can set this to or or and. So if we set it to or and we add multiple different conditions, basically it will say if any of these condition matches, then it will run this particular section. Okay. Or we can say and. So for example, we can stack um, various different conditions on top of each other. I think we should have one for user role as well. I'll have a word with the guys to add a user role option. Um, but for this example, we're just displaying this new section whenever a customer purchase a product from our restricted category. All right, so we've got a new section here, but currently our section's blank. So let's go ahead and add a few fields to our section. So for example, 
again, this is quite random. We'll just add a phone field. Um, usually you can add a file field as well, a file upload field, but and this specific version that I'm testing, it's not activated, okay? But in your case, it will be act activated. So if you wanted to add a file upload field, you will be able to. Let's go ahead and add a select box option. Let's click on this settings icon. And then here we can change a label. So we can say something like, how did he hear about us? Yes, all these questions, it doesn't make sense, but you get the idea. So let's head over to options and then we'll add our options here. So we can say search and then in the value, we'll basically repeat this, but in lowercase, um, we can say um, radio. Okay. And again, in lowercase. Okay. So this looks fine. So we'll leave it here for now. Um, if you wanted to turn it into a multi-step experience, then you can just click this plus icon here and then it'll add an additional um, checkout step. Okay. So I'll leave a link on screen to a video showing you how to create a multi-step checkout. But for now, let's head over to the design section. And then from here, we can specify our checkout design. So we can use our theme default um, template, whether that's a single column or a multi-column um, layout, or we can choose one of our layouts here, or you can just go ahead and create your own design from scratch. So let's select this one. And then for the thank you page, let's go ahead and select this one here. Again, same as with the checkout page, you can create your own custom thank you page. Um, settings, let's enable this checkout. Let's set it as our default checkout. For the checkout name, we will just say, okay, so that's fine. This is just for internal purposes as well. For the slug, we'll ignore this, where it says applies to. So usually you can create different um, checkout flows, different user groups. But since we've set this as our global checkout, it will run for everyone in our store, okay? Um, custom checkout button, into the same place order, we can say something like complete order, or you can just rename it to whatever you want. I'm gonna ignore these options for now. If you wanna enable Google address auto complete, then I'll leave a link on screen to a particular video showing you how to do that, okay? So let's just hit save changes. All right, and then let's head over to our checkout page. I've already got a few items in our basket. These items are actually from our book category. So I'm actually gonna remove them. And let's go ahead and add this particular product to our basket and check out. So when we scroll down, we're not able to see that verification field. And that's because we don't have a product, which is from our book category. Okay. However, if we add this particular product to our basket, which is in the book category, when we head over to the checkout page, we should be able to see that conditional fields. Okay. So here we can see this verification section. We've got the phone field and then we've got this select box field. Okay. So in a nutshell, and that's a quick and simple way to implement a conditional field on your WooCommerce at checkout. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comment box below or reach out to support and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.